In this video, we're going to look at making some hydrochloric acid, and I should have added under here and concentrating it. A little bit of information about this hydrochloric acid, also known as muriatic acid or spirits of salt. I've also seen it written as hydrochlorous acid. Uh, it comes in a range of 30 to 33 percent if you get muriatic acid, especially at a hardware store. Hydrochloric acid is part of our and many mammals' digestive systems. Of course, in the stomach, we know that hydrochloric acid is what starts the digestion of many of the proteins and also carbohydrates. It tends to be around a pH of 2. It's highly corrosive. Anybody who knows it will attest to that. Muriatic acid is often used to clean concrete, and it does a great job. If you leave it there too long, it'll eat your concrete. It has a melting point of negative 35 degrees Celsius or negative 31 degrees Fahrenheit. Has a boiling point of 57 degrees Celsius or 134.6 degrees Fahrenheit. And this temperature in particular is going to be important in this experiment. It comes in a clear to slightly yellow liquid at room temperature. It's also very pungent. And if you ever get a good whiff of this stuff, it will make your eyes water. Hydrochloric acid comes in these ranges, but it can be concentrated to 37%. It's also known as fuming hydrochloric acid. But no more than that using plain old distillation due to the azeotrope it forms with water, as is the case with many things that form azeotropes with water. At 37%, hydrochloric acid has a pH of less than or equal to 1. The first reaction here, which is making the hydrochloric acid, not uh, concentrating it, we take our sodium bisulfate, add some salt and ACL, and a little bit of water with some heat will yield some hydrochloric acid gas plus sodium sulfate plus water. Waters are in the brackets because they're not really part of this reaction, although there will be a little bit used in the beginning there. The second reaction, which is when hydrochloric acid is mixed with water, you end up with the hydronium uh, cation here with positive sign and the chlorine anion with the negative sign here. And these are in equilibrium. They move back and forth. The reason hydrochloric acid dissolves easily in water is because both hydrochloric acid and water are polar molecules. We're going to use cold water in this experiment because it can hold on to the gas better, much like carbon dioxide and soda pop. So the colder the water, the more hydrochloric acid gas will dissolve in it. The materials we need, which are part of this first reaction here, are sodium bisulfate, 140 grams, sodium chloride salt, 60 grams, water, 20 milliliters, just a little bit. It's not absolutely necessary, but it does help the reaction start. In our methods, we're going to take all three of these, the sodium bisulfate, the sodium chloride salt, and the water, and put them into our flask right here. That will be connected through tubing and sealed to a round bottom flask here, which has two necks. And that second neck will be connected through tubing into this beaker, which is full of ice and a little bit of water. When this flask is heated, these will combine and form hydrochloric, hydrochloric acid gas, which will then come over into this round bottom flask that has two necks in it. Nothing's going to happen in here. The gas will fill it, then continue on and end up in this beaker of ice which will have a little bit of water. I'm going to let it melt just a tiny bit. There's also going to be a magnetic stir in there. We'll see how well that works at first, but eventually as the ice melts, this should actually work. So what's happening is the gas is coming up, filling this, like I said, and it will dissolve in this colder water because of what we talked about already. The reason this is here is because often when this stops producing gas, it's going to create a little bit of a vacuum because everything's been heated. It's going to cool down and it's going to suck back. And this will most likely hydrochloric as a liquid, go backwards and fill this. So our end product will end up in here, but only at the very end of the reaction. Once we have our final product here, whatever volume it is, we're gonna divide it into two. So what we're gonna do is cheat and we're gonna rob from Peter to pay Paul, so to speak. So half of it will go here and half of it will go down here at the end. This will have some ice cubes around it, much like this did right here. So this will be cold hydrochloric acid, half of what we made here, and here's the other half. When we heat this, we're gonna drive off the hydrochloric acid gas that we produced. It will come up, come down. We don't want any cold water here because we're not trying to produce any liquids. The gas will flow through, end up in this uh, round bottom flask. will be very similar to what this does. And then because it has nowhere else to go, it will go up and through this little snout here and into the tubing and into this flask, which will have the second half of the hydrochloric acid. There will be ice cubes around here, of course, like I said, and a stir bar. So this is very good, very similar to what this is. The reason I'm using a flask this time is that I think I'll be able to trap the gas better with a narrower top to it than the beaker had. So once this runs through, we'll have our final solution of concentrated hydrochloric acid right here. We're going to watch the temperature closely. Like I said earlier, the uh, boiling point is 57 degrees Celsius. So that's what we'll be looking for when this first uh, starts. Once it goes above that and continues to go higher, we know we're getting water from here and we'll stop this reaction. At that point, this may in fact 
backflow again into here. So our final product will be in this round bottom flask right here. Really, really hope this explanation made some sense, but you'll see it as I do it. We're done here. Let's go do this. 140 grams of sodium bisulfate pre-weighed. 60 grams of salt, sodium chloride pre-weighed. 20 milliliters of water. I did this just to remind us that one milliliter of water weighs exactly one gram. In order for the reaction to run as complete as it can, I'm gonna take the sodium bisulfate here and the salt, and I'm gonna grind them together, not necessarily to a powder, but just so that they're intimately mixed, as they say. Here's a general setup. I have a 500 milliliter flask here that the sodium bisulfate, salt, and water will go into, and it will be heated. The hydrochloric gas that's formed will come up and over in this tubing. We'll fill this container right here, and then continue on and get dumped in some ice here where it will dissolve into the ice and water, making hydrochloric acid. This is for backflow. This often backflows, and when it does, it'll go up over into here, as I was talking about, and this will catch it so that it doesn't go all the way back here. To start the experiment, I'm gonna add the 20 milliliters of water here. It's not necessary to do this. If you increase the heat enough, the sodium bisulfate will start to melt and that will begin the reaction. However, this is starting out a little bit on the cold side. And next, the sodium bisulfate and salt mix. Okay. Turn on the heat here, higher, and plug this thing up good. I do have a fume hood running right now. You might be able to hear it in the background. It's just above where I'm videoing. And you must do this with a fume hood and or outdoors because hydrochloric acid, the gas is very potent, of course, and you don't want that uh, wafting around your face or nose or anything like that. So, okay, I'll be back once this heats up a bit. While that's heating up, I've got the crushed ice on this end where the tube's going right into the bottom there. And I uh, can't quite use a magnetic stir yet until some of that ice melts. It's been about 15 minutes and you can easily see the hydrochloric acid gas floating about. Eventually it'll get warm enough to go up the tube. You can just start to see the gas coming through on the other end here. The magnetic stir is now free. It's been about a half hour. That's going really well. When that stops producing gas is when this is going to backflow into that. Since the ice is melted, you can see more clearly the gas escaping through the end of that tube there. And you can also see it filling up the round bottom flask here. About one hour out right now and the reaction still proceeds. You can see the gas is still coming out at a pretty decent rate there. I think that magnetic stir is in a good place. Being able to vibrate the water in the area, hopefully getting some more of that gas dissolved. This reaction is slowing down a lot and you can even see in here how half of this uh, round bottom flask is clearing up there. And then on this end, the gas is starting to come out even less. So at some point soon, this is going to backflow right into here. I'm hoping to catch it on camera. We'll see. And there it goes. All right, I got to take this stuff apart, make sure that all of the hydrochloric acid gas is being taken care of. Be back. Okay, we're good to go here. I am going to take the tops off of this very carefully and then uh, we'll pour it out and see how much we have. Obviously, well, maybe not obviously, but there is some ice left in the beaker. So not all of it um, went ahead and melted. Before I empty this and figure out how much we made, I'm gonna dip this in here just a little bit. Some pH paper, see what we get here. Pretty dark red. We can compare that now to the table here that we have looks like around a two looks a little dark to be a three between a two and a one possibly somewhere in here okay real good okay let's see what volume of hydrochloric acid we have here of a little bit of an unknown percentage right now wow look at that oh my goodness Almost exactly 200 milliliters right on the nose there. Couldn't have done that if I tried. Now, if we want to go ahead and concentrate this, which I do want to do, it makes it easy because I'm just going to divide it into two uh, volumes of 100 milliliters each. 
ready for part two here where we concentrate the hydrochloric acid. What I did was put only 80 milliliters in here and put 120 milliliters in there. I was going to split it in half, but the more I thought about it, with the pH very close to one, I want as much of the concentrated hydrochloric acid uh, liquid that I can get, and that's why there's more in there, because that's what I'm going to be saving uh, right there. In addition to that, because we're working with hydrochloric acid, you can see there's a silicone lubricating grease container there, which I used on all the joints to make sure that the gas couldn't escape or more likely is dissolve anything else that would be in there. Uh, and in addition, I use these plastic clamps at each joint, which you really need to do to keep the gas from leaking out of the system. If it does, of course, I'll be having the fume hood running, but hopefully that's not even needed. More things to cover. No cold water will be run uh, through the distillation tube there because you don't want to turn the gas into a liquid. So it's just going to flow through that tube. It's just the easiest way to set this up. And the second thing is, of course, there will be ice all around this water so we can dissolve as much gas into there as we can. The ice is packed around that flask and the magnetic stir bar is going. I'm going to turn this on here. Start to heat up that uh, 80 milliliters right there of the hydrochloric acid we already made. Up here, we're going to watch the temperature can't see it really well through here we're at about 15 degrees celsius right now and as soon as it goes above 58 59 60 degrees of course we'll stop the whole thing so we won't see anything over here the gas plant i'm going through there and ending up in there i know you can't see this well but we're almost at 40 degrees celsius but just like when you boil water and steam comes off it before the water is boiling same thing's happening here hydrochloric acid gas is coming going around here and down here and I'm going to turn this down here and see if we can't catch some of those bubbles there. There you can go. You can see right there, right in the center of the screen. All right. If you can see this, we're around 56 degrees right now. This is ferociously boiling, which is terrific. I had to place this here so the heat coming from that didn't melt the ice too quick. It's just a piece of foam covered with aluminum foil. Because the one piece of tubing I had was a little bit short, I just connected them with the shrink wrap there, just in case you're wondering what that is. We're about 45 minutes out, and the temperature is starting to sneak up there. It's about 80 Celsius right now, 78, 80. So I'm going to turn the heat off. Down here, we probably will have some reflux happen again, where that back flows into here. So we'll keep an eye on that. If you can see this, it's going up real slow. Like uh, it's not going to be a quick reflux here. It, you can see it there dripping in. So. Um, we'll just wait until it's done. If you can tell, this is completely empty. It all reflux back into here, of course. I'm going to take this off and measure it, see how much we have. It's, of course, going to be close to 120 milliliters, but uh, we'll find out if there's been any change. Right, I'm going to go ahead and pour this into a beaker. Like I said, I don't think it's going to have changed much, and a beaker is really not the best, most accurate way to find out a volume like this, but uh, that's what I'm going to use right now. And, uh, yeah, I have to say, maybe touch above 120 if I'm going to ballpark it. But really not much more which is good we didn't get a lot of steam which of course would be water coming through and really increasing our volume so that's good i'm going to take a little bit of ph paper here again of course we checked this but let's check it one more time and uh, boy i'll tell you that's really close to one right there really really close there that's better view okay excellent